the intellectuals what they say about Muhammad. Not even the Muslim scholars. No, this is what they say because, you know, self praise have no recommendation. If you praise yourself, it doesn't carry weight. Let the opposition praises you, then it carries weight. See what they're saying. And Allah said, "Wa inna kala ala khulqul azim." Thou, O Muhammad, stand on the most exalted of all character. Lakat kana lakum fi Rasulullahi uswatun hasana. In the best of conduct would you find Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? This is what they are doing without knowing what they were doing. A man in India by the name Ramakrishna, one of the intellectuals in India, in his memoir which he delivered in University of India in Calcutta, he said, quoting what Hitler said in Hitler, wrote a book also, the name of the book is Mein Kampf. In German, it means my war, mein Kampf, my war. So in that book, Hitler said, leadership contained three traits. He said an agitator could be a leader, but there is something in agitator that, you know, he couldn't finish whatever he started up. And he said, a theorist also have the tendency to become a leader. He said, but theorists always theorize something, but at the end of the day, he couldn't complete. Somebody else would come and complete. And he said, Hitler said, perhaps leadership is the ability to get into the mind of the people and make them act the way you want them to act. That is leadership. Then Hitler said, we have not seen a single human being today on earth that combined three traits like this together. So many years after, Ramakrishna said, if Hitler is here today, he would personally tell him that, Alas, we have found that man who combined all these things together, and that is Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Ramakrishna said, the Arabs walking barefooted in the Arabian desert, uncultured, cow herders, camel riders, uneducated, fighting in the brutes of the day, you know, no knowledge very uncultured the arabs he said alexandra passed them by the egyptians passed them by the Phoenicians passed them by the byzantians passed them by no one is interested in ruling the arabs to rule them is liability no one wants to rule them he said but a single human being appeared in the desert alone in a solitary manner Within 23 years, this single human being was able to unify this most dangerous and most uncultured human being on the face of the earth. Within 23 years, unbelievable. He said, who is that? He said, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is what Ramakrishna said. He said, Muhammad is the greatest soul. Then we have another man also in America, Michael H. Hart. Michael Hart wrote many books. He's the best mathematician and thinker in America. He lives in New Jersey. He wrote also a book some 15, 20 years ago. The name of the book is The 100 Most Influential Men in History. That is a deep, you should get that book. The 100 Most Influential Men in History. So Michael H. Hart, he said, I researched the world from Adam alayhi salam and I complete with Ronald Reagan, an American president. I'm looking for the best hundred from Adam to Reagan. I'm looking for the best hundred. And he did it. So a few years ago in Madison Square Garden, he came to unveil his book. And he stood in the podium. People were listening. Now who are the hundred greatest men? And he said, my choice for the number one person to lead the chart in my book will be questioned by many. He said, my choice for the number one person in my book will raise eyebrows. He said, my choice for the number one person is definitely a fact that there isn't any human being greater than him. We've searched many, many, many people. We've come to conclusion that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the greatest man that ever walked on earth, according to Michael H. Hart. When he said this, he was called upon to come on prime time, prime time television. They called him to come on prime time television to answer the question. So Peter Jennings, an anchor on Channel 7, ABC News, called him prime time, 8 o'clock. 
He said, Michael, why would you write a book in America knowing full well that most Americans are not Muslims? Why are you provoking your potential book buyers? Don't you know that in business we have etiquette and that the etiquette is the customer is always right? So why are you provoking your book buyers by saying that the opposition, Muhammad, is number one? Answer the question. You know what Michael Isha did? He put his head down like this. He said, Peter, truth is a statement of fact. He said, Peter, I am not happy to say Muhammad is number one. I am not, but he is number one. He said, I'm not comfortable to say Muhammad, I am not comfortable, but he is number one. He said, Peter, if you think there is anyone that you think is number one, bring him. We have our criteria. We will analyze him and we will let you know. But so far, there isn't any human being that make impact on the face of the earth than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah said in the Quran, amanu minkum utul ilim darajat. Those amongst you with knowledge, with, 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 with iman, Allah will give them a rank of hair. But men of knowledge, darajat, Allah will give them a darajat, a degree above everybody else. Knowledge. By virtue of knowledge, these people were making this profound statement. And Michael H. had said, My God and my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ, is number three. Can you imagine? His God is number three. But Muhammad is number one. He said, why did I do that? He said, because Christianity is a religion that was created by Paul. It should be Paulinity. Because more than half of the New Testament, the New Testament contained 27 books. Paul wrote 14 books. He wrote more than half. Jesus never epistle, never write or sign a single epistle. So Paul did a wonderful job to bring Christianity at par. But he used the name of Jesus. So therefore, we have to share and balance the credit. By doing that, we give Jesus number three. And Paul number six. But Muhammad is number one. Mahatma Gandhi in India, in his book, The Young India. In that book, Mahatma Gandhi said, the more I read about the prophet Muhammad, the more I am convinced that Islam did not spread by the sword. It spread by the basic, simple, natural, inherent nature codified in the Quran that makes people to accept the Quran. He said at the end, when I was reading the history of this great man, when I reached the last page, the last chapter, the last line, I became, I became sad because there was no more to read again about this soul who kindled a light in the Arabian Peninsula. Is there any human being greater than Muhammad? Indeed, there is not. Then we have Alfonso Lamartine. Alfonso Lamartine is also a Frenchman. And he said, I've also given three principles for a would-be potential leader. He said, any great leader, greatness of purpose. For what purpose should he become great? And does he have any interest, those who are supporting behind him? Because today, before you become somebody, you have to have somebody behind you. Does that leader have, he compared all the men, including Moses and the prophet and the sage, Abraham, everybody to Muhammad, he realized that. There isn't any great leader. If you study Muhammad closely, no leader that supersedes Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He said, great men created arms, but these people, they die with their arms crumbling like this to them. He said, Mussolini, he created the biggest empire. It crumbled right before his eye. Genghis Khan of Mongolia, at one point in time, if he venture to conquer, he said, the greatest pleasure in life is to conquer your enemy, seize their horses, and hear the women crying. But his empire crumbled right before his eye. He said, men have created empires, but it crumbled in their eye. He said, look at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look at the empire he created. And he said, Muhammad is a teacher, 
a lawgiver, a businessman, a counselor. Muhammad is a soldier, a guerrilla fighter. He said Muhammad is a messenger, is a prophet. He said Muhammad is a pope and a Caesar combined together. But he is a pope and Caesar without any standing army. If Muhammad moved, he moved thinkers, he moved logician, he moved temples, and he moved gods. He said, this is Muhammad. And is there any human being? He said, if these are the yardstick whereby greatness is sought, then we have to ask ourselves, is there any human being greater than Muhammad? No, there isn't, according to what they are telling us. There isn't. So Allah said it. Thou, O Muhammad, stand on the most exalted of all character. They will talk about you, Muhammad. Look, right now as we sleep, as we hear, some nation is calling Zuhur, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, around the world. His name is being mentioned, the most commonest name on the face of the earth. It's Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Encyclopedia Britannica, it says, he said, Encyclopedia Britannica, he said, Muhammad is the most successful of all the world's prophets. George Bernard Shaw in England in 1865, in his book, The Genuine Islam, he said, I predict within the next 200 years, England must accept Islam. Nay, Europe. He said, I'm predicting in 200 years, England must accept Islam. He said, no, Europe. Napoleon Bonaparte, in his memoir, he wrote to Queen Isabella in Den Haag, Holland. He said, hail thee queen, I am waiting for the time that Islam will take over Europe and I will take over Islam. <laughs> See, he was thinking from the point of view of politics because he know Islam will take over. That is exactly what Allah said. Who was Lazi Arsala Rasullah who Bill Huda, what Dean Il Hak, Lis Hira who Allah Dean Kuli, Walaka Halakafirun, Walaka Halamishirkun. At the end, Allah said, Wakafa Billah Shahida. I am Allah who sent my messenger with the religion of truth to supersede and bulldoze and bulldoze any other religion, even if the Mushrik like it or not, even if the unbelievers like it or not. At the end, Allah said, Wakafa Billah Shahida. It is me, I'm Allah. I am the witness to see to it that my deen will prevail. And Alhamdulillah, our deen is prevailing. So we have to rise up, my dear Islam. This deen is for you. You will hear a lot of things that you're not going to like. You will see a lot of things that you're not going to like. But that is what the messenger said. Islam started out strangely, and it will finish also strangely. So good news to you. May you rise up to the challenge of Islam in the 21st century. Help the cause of Islam. Support the cause of Islam. Allah, you are potential daddy. You don't have to wait to become Sheikh Ibrahim, Sheikh Bunba, Sheikh Abdullah Masoudi, Sheikh Zandani. You don't have to. The messenger said, Balik anni walaw ayah. Whatever you know about Islam, say it. Correct Islam. Lead Islam. Sheikh Ahmed did that. May Allah be pleased with him. He said, if this is your label, then wear it. The Jew have a label. The Christian have a cross. He said, if this Islam is your label, show it. Wear it. If a Jew and a Christian and a Hindu is proud with his religion, why should you take the back seat? At one point in time in the world's history, Islam used to be the leader of all nations. And the Arabic language used to be the lingua franca of all the world. People have to come to the Arabian, I mean the Islamic world, to learn all the sciences. The Europeans were living in cages. They stink in cages. When Muslims were doing wonders in Andalusia, in Baghdad, in Qum, in Medina, in all over the Islamic world, the Muslim raised the banner. What is happening today to the Muslims? We have to rise up to that challenge. It's a challenge. It's a time. It's a trial. Allah is testing you. You think Allah will make you Muslim and that's it? He will try you and test you on different level. So may Allah make it easy for you. May Allah protect you and guide you. Our women, may Allah give them the power to continue in the way they are. I respect my women a lot. In this Western Hemisphere, they have their hijab on. We have to respect them. We have to be hung, humble with them. We have to, you know, we have sabr with them. And our businesses, may Allah put barakah in it. Our children, may Allah give them, you know, the blessings of Islam. May Allah give it the knowledge of Islam so that we continue in this din.